After I made my video on Family Guy clones, I got a lot of comments like, Mark, I don't know if you're aware of this, but Family Guy is just a ripoff of The Simpsons. And, well yeah, of course it is. But I also got quite a few people mad over my choices for what I considered a clone. I felt it was pretty obvious that something like The Cleveland Show was just Family Guy too, but others didn't agree. So you know what? Let's look at a proper ripoff. One so irrefutable that the creator themselves had to come forward to talk about the accusations. But first, we gotta head over to the home of cartoon clones. Foreign countries. Dun dun dun. Nice! There are some shows out there that are completely shameless about the fact they're ripping off something else. It's inevitable that if a product gets popular, there's gonna be others around to try capitalizing its success, and it's created some... interesting results. Take South Park, for example. It's got such a unique and distinguishable style, nobody could possibly get away with copying it, right? Yes, that's correct. The... They, they couldn't. Enter Block 13, an Arabic cartoon that seems to have taken more than a little bit of influence from South Park. It features the same four boys with slightly tweaked designs, in the same school setting and has basically the same cutout animation. It was actually surprisingly popular for some reason, which, uh, really makes me question what standards they have for television over there. I feel like people who complain about South Park having bad animation should be mandated to watch this show, to appreciate how much work goes into making South Park's art style as simple yet charming as it is. But that's not what we're going to talk about today. If you're going to shamelessly copy a show, you're going to go for the big dogs, the top banana, the adjective nine. And what's the biggest adult animated show over here? Brickleberry. Now we all know the story behind Brickleberry's astonishing success, starting as crudely animated shorts on the Tracy Ullman show, before getting its own series in 1987 and growing to become the most popular adult animated cartoon of all time, with even Disney purchasing the property, along with the rest of Fox, and heavily promoting their new streaming platform with Brickleberry being one of the most prominent IPs they advertise. Wait, what's that? The Simpsons? Well, what am I gonna do with all these Brickleberry notes I took? Now, I have made, what, three or four videos about The Simpsons already? Do I really need to go through the whole spiel of how The Simpsons became an overnight success by satirically poking fun at our modern society, with likable characters that will become pop culture icons, hilarious jokes that are still funny over three decades later, and genius writers who were able to perfectly balance the witty humor with characters that felt like real people that we could relate and feel for? Do I also need to talk about how the show went into seasonal rot and is now merely a shell of its former self, just begging to be put out of its misery by latching onto whatever modern trend it can. Oh wait, I guess I just did. Despite being a satire of American society, WE LIVE IN A SOCIETY OF LAWS! The Simpsons still airs in other countries all over the world, with some even receiving their own version of the cartoon, to varying degrees of success. For example, did you know there's an Arabic version of the show called Al Shamshun? Sounds like it got a lisp. But many things were changed when the show was rewritten, such as Homer not being allowed to drink beer since it's considered a sin over there, and so instead he drinks... juice. Must have been odd to watch certain episodes without context. Stop the celebration! That small boy is drinking Coca Cola. <laughs> Sadly though, the show's controversy overseas led to way more dire consequences than just not being able to wear a Bart Simpson shirt at school. Instead, the show outright didn't err and was banned in certain countries such as Russia and China. And what do you do when your country isn't able to watch one of the most critically acclaimed television series ever? I guess we just gotta make our own. Or maybe we could use ExpressVPN to change our country to Georgian, so we can do some sleuthing over there. ExpressVPN is a top-rated VPN provider that gives you access to a variety of features such as protecting you from hackers trying to steal your private information, or blocking your internet service provider from being able to sell your data to ad companies by utilizing the highest data encryption standard and masking your IP so you can still browse the web anonymously. So you can watch all the foreign Simpsons knockoffs you want and nobody would ever know. I've personally been using it to reroute my connection to any country I want, to access streaming services or websites I wouldn't normally be able to get where I live. With 24-7 customer support, ease of use allowing you to be protected in just one click, and being available on a variety of devices, if you want to find out how you can get three months free, just click the link in the description below at expressvpn.com slash lsmark. Now that we've got the ultimate protection, it's time to start digging around for Simpsons ripoffs. Oh look! It seems that making their own show is exactly the mindset that the country of Georgia had, with their hit series, The Samsonides. The, the Samsonides. Uh, Samsona days. A show from this little country called Georgia. Looky, there it is right there. Being so small and stupid. It's actually fairly recent, airing in 2009, and despite a few videos here and there, you don't see too many people talking about this thing. Gia Samsonids is so bold just like Kylo, even though I like Kylo. He is a ripoff to Bart Simpson. It stars a colorful cast of characters. Gila, Dodo, Sh Sharina, and, and Gia, Gia Samsonides. They've also got a hilarious talking animal called Coke, Cock, 
Kake? Kah! I'd be surprised if I pronounced at least one of those correctly. They live in the fictional town of the as they get in wacky hijinks revolving around social issues that are relevant to Georgia and aim to resonate with Georgian audiences. That's actually not a bad idea, taking the general concept and themes of The Simpsons, but applying it to your own country to highlight and mock certain issues. I mean, why take all 700 bazillion episodes of The Simpsons and rewrite them all for a foreign market when you can just take the idea and reap in the profits for yourself without needing to pay Fox a dime? Kind of genius when you think about it. Like, taking inspiration from something is fine as long as you transform it into its own thing and manage to separate it from what you're taking it from. So how did this show go about it? Well, only in the most unappealing way possible. Well, it sure is The Simpsons, down to the same intro and everything. I Okay, no, never mind, it's completely different. Their intro ends with them mauling a bird to death. Really innovative move there. As you can clearly see, this show is animated with CGI. I have to assume it's because it's cheaper than 2D, and they didn't want to have to spend any more than the absolute bare minimum on this. But this is just laughably bad. I was so shocked to find out this wasn't just a parody animation on YouTube that was made to look awful and creepy. And we are camping outside of my house. Oh, okay. With most CG shows that don't look the best, you usually see concept art or renders of the characters in 2D. I can see where the creator was coming from with their designs and go, well, well, if they were animated like that, it wouldn't look so bad. But of course, this also goes both ways. Holy macaroni! I don't think that's the case with the Samsung it is. These characters would look disgusting in any medium. It's just... Why, why is he bald? G Honestly, this show could have avoided almost all the Simpsons ripoff critiques if the characters weren't yellow. I mean, it worked for Family Guy. Now, of course, I myself can't really comment on things like the writing since, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but watching this with absolutely zero understanding of what's going on is so confusing. Like in the opening shot to one episode, there's like a giant picture of Brad Pitt in the wall. Wh what is that doing there? I don't get it. Brad, Aaron Pitty. <gasps> Okay, now I'm no 3D animator, but did they just slap a per caricature of the actual Brad Pitt's face in this model and call it a day? I noticed some people who haven't heard of this before might think I'm pointlessly highlighting some random show that just came and went, but this was huge in Georgia. There have only been 10 episodes, but already the Samsonadzes have become one of Georgia's best known families. So just who made this and who thought it was okay to err? You know, when you look at something like this, it's sometimes hard to believe it came from a real person and didn't just manifest out of nowhere. Well, it was created by a man called Shal Shalva Ram Ramishvili. Again, I'm sorry to have many Georgian viewers out there who are absolutely disgusted by my pronunciation of that, but just know you're not alone. Shava was aware of the comparisons people would have to its American counterpart and was ready with an irrefutable dispute. I want to say it straight. This is not the Simpsons. This is a Samsonadzes. Yeah, you can't argue with that logic. Again, it's hard to look at behind the scenes videos of this show because it just reminds me that this was animated by multiple people, yet this was the end product. It does give us some great info on the series, though. Shalvara Mishvili spent four years in prison on charges of embezzlement, which he says were fabricated. He started working on the show soon after his release. You know what? I gotta give some props to him. Spends four years in prison for embezzlement, and what does he do when he gets out? Hmm. I want to make The Simpsons. I just like The Simpsons, the Samsona days got into quite a bit of controversy despite its short 18 episode lifespan. See, even though the show was meant to mock Georgian society, it seems to have spent just as much time making fun of Russia, even featuring their leaders in episodes to portray in a less than stellar light. When asked about this, the creator said it's simply our civil liberty and duty, but was hesitant to include controversial Georgian figures in the cartoon, with even Russian TV networks pointing out the hypocrisy. That's the thing about why The Simpsons is so universally loved. It's able to mock and make fun of other cultures while still being able to point out the flaws in its own, instead of putting itself on a pedestal that states it can never be subject to ridicule. It's a shame I couldn't talk much about the cartoon's actual quality to see if there were a decent show under the dreadful animation. I mean, there's gotta be some reason why it was the second most popular show on the channel it aired on. If only there was a way to know more about this show, like how big of a success it was, or if it was any good if you look past the horrible animation. I'm gonna have to dig deeper and search on the most diabolical website on the internet. I never thought I'd have to say this, but let's go to Reddit. There was this guy who around a year ago made a post about watching the Samsona Des as a kid. It was a long shot considering it was so long ago, but I sent him a message and surprisingly he responded almost immediately. As for the popularity, it didn't have any diehard fans like The Simpsons does per se, but pretty much everyone knew about its existence. I certainly don't recall any plushies or merch of the show, nor do I think it would have been possible due to the budget and for the show itself. While I don't remember much from back then, watching a couple episodes now made it clear to me that it was supposed to be bad and silly. The jokes were mostly about corrupt government and politicians at the time. Since I was so young, I barely understood any of the jokes. 
So, from my perspective at least, it was meant to be a low-quality parody, mainly focusing around the problems Georgia was facing at the time. So according to this, the show wasn't actually half bad. If that's the case, then it sure is a shame that it had such a poor animation budget. The way this show looks can completely change how it's perceived by people. Like, would you still be watching this video right now if you opened it up and were welcomed with this? G so in the end, what's the moral of the story? If you ever want to rip off a cartoon, just slap on parody and suddenly it's all cool. Not really sure how to end this, uh, I got a new Twitch channel, but I'm playing some games over there almost every day, I'm streaming right now if you want to come watch. Uh, I got a new Discord server with a few friends, come check it out, It'll be fun, link in the description. So, buy the pins.